Good evening, everyone. Good evening, our Sestras and other viewers. Welcome to Sestra Now's Workshop Wednesday. All right, tonight um, we're going to have an open discussion on the topic of social media, how to balance your personal life and your business, right, on social media platforms. Um, we're going to get into that, and I'm going to tell you the, the issues that I've encountered and why I thought that this is an on-time discussion. But before I do that, um, joining us tonight, we have the co-founders of uh, Sistar Circle, Dion McLemore and uh, Trendlin, her partner. We also have one of our sisters, Vanessa, in the house. Okay, and so um, I want to introduce them because they're going to—they are also a, a, a very instrumental part of what I'm going to tell you guys. I don't know whoever's been following the Facebook page and Session Now social media, you may have seen it, but we have such an exciting announcement um, today. We announced our joint venture with UBC TV. Yes. So what does that mean? That means that we are actually have, you know, Sestra Now is about all about sisterhood and empowering and uniting women all over the world, empowering each other mentally, physically, and financially. So we're about all things women, right? And girls. So now, with this partnership with UBC TV, we will be able to have our own sisterhood channel powered by the Sisterhood Alliance. So if you didn't know, the Sisterhood Alliance unites other all sisterhoods, all women's organizations and women's leaders. That's why Dion and Trendelin are here tonight, because they're one of our partners. Uh, they are aligned with us via the Sisterhood Alliance. So together, we are going to unite and have the most fire channel this world has ever seen on a global level. Today, UBC TV, or really this week, UBC TV announced that it's now launched on the Roku network on top of the other networks that the other uh, channels that they're on on streaming and TV and radio, all of that. They also just launched on Roku TV. Roku TV alone um, goes into streams into 120 million households globally. Okay. That's pretty exciting. So Sestra now is going to be able to via its sisterhood Alliance, via it's the partnership and Alliance with other sisterhood organization put together that fire content, right? That's all about sisterhood. Imagine talking about fashion, um, food, um, business, women in business. We all know we're about women in business, but that's not it. Fitness, health, travel, talk shows, what, relationships, everything. We can do a show. So if you have an idea about content that you would like or programming that you would like to have on the sister channel, right? Please contact me, Stephanie at sisternow.com to find out how we can connect and you can give that pitch, okay? So that's it for that exciting news, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our topic for to this workshop Wednesday, which is how to balance um, business and personal home life on social media. So I, I have a few topics that I jotted down, but let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about, right? So me personally, um, I am one that anyone here can, can see that I have a huge presence on social media. I'm on all the platforms. I'm, I'm on Facebook a lot, not as much Instagram, but uh, Facebook. They know me. I have, uh, 5,700 followers. I manage about three different groups, the Sestra Now private group, which is just a couple of Sestras to hit 2,000 members, and another group that just exceeded 500, that's our business group, and then our business into Sestra Now International business page, man, I think that itself just hit 1.5, um, 1,500 people. So I stay active, posting constantly, constantly. But one thing that I believe everyone can say about me is they have no idea what's going on <laughs> in my personal life. Because although I'm all on there and I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, no one knows is she, you know, they may know, I don't know, they don't see any dude or whatever, but they don't know. 
you know, I could be gay. They don't know because I don't put my personal private business on my, my own personal social media page. I mean, a couple of years ago, I would do it a little bit, but um, like here and there. But um, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Like what, what is the balance, right? The reason I used to do it more is because I wanted to grow my business. And I thought that um, people connect with you better when they know you, right? People want to know who they're dealing with. People want to, you have to build relationships. People want to know who they're buying from or who, what group they're joining. Who is this leader, right? So I try to give them a little you know, you know, here and there, oh, I'm away, I'm in this hotel, oh, I look at my food, you know, taking pictures and stuff. But as far as what's going on personally in my relationship, like, um, you know, um, I'm separated or, you know, I'm moving or, um, you know, this is going on with my, you know, if I had a child, this is going on with my child, like that kind of stuff, I, I don't do. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. How much of that do you really want to tell? So tell the world. So remember, this is about business owners building a business. Like you want, you're in there, you're out there, you want them to buy your product, you want the, you, you want to grow your Facebook group, you want, you. they are constantly talking to these people, right? So not these people, oh, I shouldn't have said that, to um, the social media followers, right? To our Facebook friends, you know. So the first question is, you know, a topic I want to talk about along these lines is how do you separate privacy, your personal privacy? How do you balance keeping your life private and appealing to the people on a personal level? Because I'm hearing that from a lot of business coaches, right? People say, people, you need to build relationships. People need want to know who you are. So how do you, maybe some of the ladies here, welcome Adrian tonight, one of our other sessions, our uh, director of safety joined us. How do you guys balance your private life from building your business? Do, does everyone know everything about you? Do they know about your honey bun? Do they know about your children? You know, so um, who? anyone want to weigh in on that? Dion, go ahead. I will. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone else speaking? Um, Dion, no, Dion, you raise yeah. your hand. Go ahead. Oh, I did. Okay. Thank you. Um, so what I want to say first off is that um I think it depends on your business as far as how much information you should give. People do like to connections is very important. And I actually learned that more with working online, with having a business that, you know, an online presence is kind of necessary. So I learned that more with that people still, especially because it's online, you know what I mean? So um, I think it also depends on the type of business you have as well, too, as far as how much private information. So as far as my social media go, especially my personal one and advertising my business on my social page, people do know a little more about me. They know I have children. They know I'm married. You know, I will put some personal stuff. I'm actually a very, very private person, um, honestly. Um, however, I am willing to give a little in order to make those connections if it means building my brand building my business you know but not doing try not to do not doing too much um so i think and as far as finding the balance uh so sorry circle we just did our second episode of our uh podcast and we talked about a work-life balance period and mm -hmm. the thing i kept saying as i listened to it was i haven't found it i don't even know if a balance is the right word we talked about that one of our other um members brought up the fact that you know maybe we shouldn't call it balance maybe we should um say navigate you know the navigate because you know when you think about a balance you think about a specific amount of time for this and that when in actuality when you are owning your own business as an entrepreneur you know some things, especially if you have a family, some things are going to have to take precedent over other things, you know, so that's my two cents. Right. Okay. So, so I'm going to segue into when is it? Okay. So you're saying, uh, you, you know, you're on there. You, 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 I think you're saying your point was that you're private Dion. Oh, Adrian. I'm sorry, Adrian, go ahead. And then we'll go back to Dion. Okay. <clears throat> Just um following up on what Dion just said too about posting 
I think people tend sometimes to overshare their life. I don't think every single bit of your life needs to be put on to be more personable on social media. You know, I think it's, you have to figure out how much you want to share. Do you want your absolutely, you know, whole life? Like I get up in the morning and brush my teeth. I don't think that much needs to be put <laughs> on. You know what I mean? Because That's some the people next question. do that. Adrian, you know, so he, Huh? That's my next question. When are you telling too much? What is the what are the limits? Like, you know, like so please preach, girl. Please try, preach, yeah. sister. So, Tell me. Yeah, so you're going in, you know, as soon as you wake up, you know, you got crackers in your eyes. You're about, oh, I'm just waking up, rolling out the bed. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm doing this. That's too much. <laughs> People don't need to know that to be more relatable to you. You know, I think that, um, and that's also to me, because I'm the queen of safety, that's an issue because now you're giving people in this world too much information on your movements, how you move. They're watching. When people say, you know, they you think they're not watching, they're watching everything. You know what I mean? Just to get a pattern, you know, like she was saying, she has kids. So just say she was the woman who got up and said, oh, I'm waking up my kids at 3.45 in the morning. Yes. We have fresh teeth. We're getting dressed. We're eating breakfast at 6.09. And we're walking out the door to my blue car at 9.02. And now I'm driving to their school. Oh, this is our drive to the school. So if people are know your neighborhood, they're watching it and be like, okay, she goes this way. She just turned west on First Street. Oh, now she just went by Sunside Boulevard. You know yes. what I'm saying? You know, she getting her kids out the door. What makes you think that they won't get there before you to get your kids and grab your kids? You know, I, you know I mean? that's number three, Adrian. You must have saw my list. How did you, did you see my list? I have no. one privacy, two, when are you telling too much? Three, safety issues, keeping children safe. And you went right into it. Yeah, so it's like things like that if you have kids and even just if you're a single woman, oh, getting up and doing the same kind of thing and I'm walking out the door and you you on Facebook Live and you know, you, you're showing everything. You're showing your apartment number, your complex, you know what I'm yes. saying? All that stuff is too much of oversharing. I think sharing enough to be personable is like, um, I like to make pancakes every Saturday morning. Who else likes to make pancakes every Saturday morning? <laughs> You know, things along those kind of subjects to share. I mean, I think it's okay for you to be like, okay, me and my husband got up this morning. We made these pancakes and it was good. You know, that's different. You know, they could kind of know like you and maybe if you, even if you want to share that, that that's still a personal type of thing you have to figure out for yourself. But me being a safety person, yes, I think um, when I post, I'll be like me and my husband because we both do the safety stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. So, but other than that, and if I do go on vacation, I don't put stuff on. I don't share the vacation right then and there. I wait till I'm back for like two weeks and be like, oh, I was on this island. Who else has been on this island? Who likes cruises? You know what I'm saying? You do yes. it after the fact. Don't do anything while you're doing the fact. Because yes, yes. Like, oh, they're not home. Let me go rob their house. Travel, travel, children, everything that she's saying. So she, um, yep. thank you, Adrian. Adrian took you're us welcome. right into my next question, which was, you know, to discuss the safety issues with sharing too much about your private life. And yeah, she's, she's here some very practical, very, very important stuff. But what about this one? We're in a world where people get Vanessa so involved in your life. Up. And what about you, you got your man on there or your, your, you know, your woman, whatever, you know, and they like, you know, I think it was a joke that um Eddie Murphy said, People looking and they like, they can have any other woman or any other man in the world. They be like, nah, I want that man. <laughs> Next thing you know, they stalking your man. They stalking your husband. They watching. They looking at your whole life. Like, I want that life. And next thing you know, these people are in your significant other's inbox because you showing all this wonderful and great stuff that he or she does for you. You know what I'm saying? Like some things you just got to keep probably uh, private for the safety reasons and also to safeguard your relationships, right? Yeah. Sometimes Vanessa and then you has put, her hand raised, Stephanie. I think she wanted to say. Vanessa has her hand oh, I, raised. I know, I know. I just wanted to Okay, finish. I'm sorry. But okay, Vanessa, go ahead. Vanessa, please, you have the floor. Okay, hi. I was yes. trying to get myself unmuted. 
um, what I was going to say was um, I agree with what the last speaker said. I don't share enough online. And I know that that's a problem because mm. um, I'm very, I'm a single person living on my own. And like she said, you don't want people knowing your schedule. You don't want people knowing when you're not home and you're on vacation. You know, there's a lot yes. of crazy people out there in this world. And unfortunately, when you're on social media, you don't know who you're talking to. Yes. Yes, that's so true. That, so I've been know. conflicted about how much to share. So as a as a result, I've shared very little. They know about my business. They don't really know anything about me. And I know that's not good either. <laughs> so what are you, let's talk about that. Because this is really about business and personal life balancing in on social media because we all want to get that paper right yeah. we all want to build our following and build our audience but to build it must we tell them like you said like oh i woke up this morning and i you know what i mean i don't because i can't do that like get disgusting like getting them all no. up in your business no. like i watch some people and i cringe at mm -hmm. the stuff that i'm watching them tape um, I don't care and I don't want to see it and it's boring and it's just like too much. It's, you yeah. know why I say that, especially if you're on social media and you're about your business, what we didn't say yet is there's a certain level of professionalism, right? Last mm -hmm. week we talked on that subject about yeah. business etiquette, right? So mm -hmm. let me share a little bit about that this week. There are certain things that you don't want to share um, that can negatively impact your business and your following. Like you must be professional pretty much at all times. Yes, everyone goes on vacation. Everyone eats. You can show all of that stuff. But when it comes to certain, you know, personal, really personal things, I don't think we need to know about, like you said, like unless you're in the business of um I don't know, dental hygiene or something. We don't have to know you're brushing your teeth. Um, I don't know. It's just these people, a lot of these people are taking it way to the extreme. So that leads me to my next topic that I want to discuss. Um, how far, when you're on here, because most, tell the truth, we're not on social media. The reason I became more active on Facebook is when I started Sestra now four years ago. But before that, I was I would check and it wasn't a be it wouldn't be every day. Now it's every day, all day. I'm watching Facebook. But before that, a couple of times a week, maybe I'll be on there. So we're really on here to build that business, right? So in doing that, how much should religion and politics um, be discussed or addressed, you know, on, in our posts and on, you know, our pages, because I see some, I don't do that. Like session now itself is non-political and non-religious because we are, um, multicultural and multi-ethnic community of women. And we don't want to offend anyone and we don't want to get off subject. Our, it, our, mission is to empower women mentally fit all women mentally physically financial but if the republicans and the democrats get to fight in or if the buddhists and the christians get to fight in and the atheists and the christians or whatever that's not sisterhood so that's why we said no you know like we're not a non-religious organization i'm personally a christian so on my own page you're going to see that i even have a ministry channel on my youtube on my personal Instagram, you're going to see me talk about Jesus and I have a, a whole channel, right? But I don't put that anywhere on my Sestra Now page. There's never you're going to see me posting something where I'm preaching at you. I'm not going to do that because that's not what that is for. So well, how do you guys feel about what you, how you see things developing on social media with people um, in business talking about politics or talking about religion? So let me know what you guys think about that. So I think that if, like she said, it goes back to what your business is. If you're a, a pastor or that's what you're on there to, I guess, get people to follow you in your ministry, then yes. feel free to talk about that. Um, but if, like you said, if I have a business, I want you to buy a lipstick from me. I, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I don't want you to buy a lipstick for me. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and talking about, you know, I'm a Republican and, you know, I, I'm Catholic. But, you know, this color will look good on you. You know, that does the lit mesh. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying, I guess I was saying it's kind of be funny, but yeah, but just, you know, like I said, it all goes back to your business, but if you're selling a product or, or you are a financial coach or you're, you know, you do what you do empowering women, you know, I don't think there's any place for that in that forum. Like you said, you have to separate those two, those three forums of what your business is, what your religious beliefs may be, and what your political beliefs may be. Because when you're in business, you you want people to buy from you, stay with you, follow you, like you, you know, for your product, and not because they agree with you. Because, you know, like I said, you know, I had a lot of customers talking about, oh, this is look good with my Trump uniform. So, you know, be like, okay, but the reason we have, you know, the safety device is not to match the uniform for that, but to keep you safe because, you know what I'm saying? So you have to be able to, if people, you know, your customers or just say you're on a platform like this and they keep bringing it back to religion or political, you have to be able to don't get offended by it and yes. just bring it back to what's up front and what, why you're there, actually. I'm, I'm here to sell my stun gun. Not talk about religion or that. So you have to be strong enough to be. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about it um, yes. personally. That's a touchy situation for them. Because even like random people, they were like, what's your religion? And, you know, what's your political? But I'd rather not speak about that like that. But I yes. do believe, only you need to know, I do believe and I am affiliated with um, either Republican or liberal. That's all they need to know. And like I said, I don't have to share that information because that is, that's not relevant to what my business is. So I think that's what sometimes people overlap. Some people, how can I say it without offending anybody here, are overly religious. So everything that comes out their mouth, whether it's business, is something about, you know, who they believe in. Yes. So I may not believe in the same thing you believe in. So Otherwise, don't force feed me your beliefs. Ooh, preach. Oh, yes, I'm yes. sorry. I hope I didn't offend you by saying. <laughs> no, no. All right. But okay. Yeah. So things like that. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to your business, you have to be very precise. Yes. I'm here on this platform for my business. Like I said, like you, you have a business page and your private page. You can put whatever you want in your private as long as it's not offensive. You know, you could talk about your religious, you could talk about this, but a lot of people, what I see on social media, Instagram, TikTok, they're offensive about it when they start talking about those things. Just Vanessa, don't be offensive. Oh, okay. Vanessa, I'm sorry. Okay. no, okay. So I'm sorry, Adrian. So I just no, thought someone on. dropped off. So Vanessa is next and then Dion. They both raised their hands. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome. Yeah, I I was gonna say, you know, she's correct. I don't share any any political or religious information, you know, on my business page, anything that I may agree with, I don't usually disagree because I don't want to get into arguments with people because they get really silly sometimes. Um, it's on my personal page, not on my business page. And I also, I don't want to turn off any possible customers by trying to drag them into what, how I feel. Thank you, Vanessa. Dion, I noticed your hand was raised. Oh, I don't remember raising my hand. However, um, <laughs> I will say that, um, like really getting into the business more, you know, being my, you know, being a my, uh, being an entrepreneur, you definitely have to be able to separate the things, separate them. Um, just like everybody else said, I agree with what everybody said thus far. Like you have to be able to separate them because people do get caught up in not being able to. And what are you here for? You're here to, you know, get this client, make this sale or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can't let something like that get in your way. And if you do, you are definitely going to, um, hinder your business, but do what you want on your personal page. That's what it's for. <laughs> you said, do what you want on your personal page. Mm -hmm. Right. Do it. That's what it's for. All right. So um, we're, I just wanted to keep this to, to 30 minutes. So the last 
topic and then we'll just go through, I'll go through some of the conclusions that we reached because this is supposed to be how to. So I'm, I guess I'm supposed to give tips, but I think everyone is getting the point. You can do what it is you want to do, but understand that maybe you need to reassess what you're doing if you don't have the following that you, if your following isn't constantly increasing, it may be because, how do I say this without offending someone? Like that people are looking at you like you're crazy, you know? And they are unfollowing you and unfriending you because they're thinking you're you're nuts because um, you, you oversharing, right? And you're too religious or you're too political or you're, um, what's another? Like you're too angry right? you too emotional. So if this is about business, so if you're just on Facebook and you're just a regular person, do you, I, my sister likes to say, do you boo-boo, right? You can do that. But if you're in there for business, you must be professional and you must be mindful. So the last thing I want to talk about on that note is may we overwhelm as all of us as business owners, may we overwhelm family and friends, if we are always posting about our business. Because remember, Facebook, I don't know about you, but my page, uh, my personal page, I have family that maybe I haven't even seen in years, but they're my Facebook friends, right? Um, so, and then you have people that are, they, a lot of them not one there for business at all. But I, on my personal page, I mostly post about business. So, can it get to the point, my question is, so can it get to the point where we are overwhelming people, where they get tired? And I'm starting to think that that may be the case because if I do a post about a business post, which I do several of them every day, I may get no reactions, no likes, no response, no comments. But if I repost if that I lost weight, that I'm at a funeral, I'm at a wedding, birthday party, anything like that personal, all of a sudden it comes out the don't don't let me post about a funeral. It's like 200 comments for like two weeks. But I can post like if you go to my page, all of you go to my page after this. And I did an at everyone for this exciting announcement that Sestra now has partnered um, with UBC TV and we're gonna have our own channel. What do I know about TV, right? That's exciting. I know if I saw that. I, I would be like my friend, like, what's congratulations? What's going on? I want to talk to them. Crickets. So what does everyone feel about that? Maybe overwhelming where it gets to the point where they get so numb to the fact that you always talk about business that they just start to ignore you and don't pay attention, even when it's something big. Anyone's um have anything to say on that? I don't think they are um not interested. I think now. You have intrigued them. So now they're watching like, okay, she's with the TV now. What's, what's she going to do next? So they're more watchers. This is what I call the watchers of social media because these will be the same people watching for almost a year. And then all of a sudden you're going to get a message or you're going to get, okay, I, I want to be part of this because I've been watching you for a year and I like what you're doing and you're positive. So I think when you put those real positive, you know, vibrant, let's get this going kind of post. I think a lot of people sit back and they're not there in the watch. But as mm. soon as, like you said, when they put, you put up, I'm going to be true. If you put something negative or not good or something that's real in, imperfection about you or a situation, they quick to make a comment. And I think that's what's happening on social media now. And like I said, it's a switch. Because if you remember back from four years ago, it was a different kind of vibe on social media to mm. what it is now. So I think it's evolving to people are more listening to like, what was it they used to call that when they do something and people were taping it, you know, um, bad stuff. And they was like, oh my, oh my God, look at that. And then they'll repost negative stuff versus like, you know, that person could have been hurt. I think we could have, that they, they could have handled it different ways. They're giving a positive twist yes. on it. So mm -hmm. people are not so willing to give a positive twif, twist on stuff versus giving it a negative. So my yeah. comment is you don't have to um, comment anymore, but just keep, keep 
posting like they are commenting. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it moving. And eventually people will, you know, start making comments to, you know, get it stretched out some more. All right. So okay. that's my feel on it. Trendelin, you want to say something? On that? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say your original question was, um, is it too much for your family if you post a lot about your business? My response to that is that is not your business. Like it doesn't matter. You can post as much as you want about your business. It brings me back to a saying that I always repeat to myself, and that is, um, those that matter don't mind, those that mind don't matter. So mm, I like that. Um, I mm -hmm. You know, so if there are going to be people who are just there to look and see, let them look and see. Maybe they'll, in their, what if they're hating and they're hating, they'll mention to somebody and somebody might, it might trigger someone to come and check it out. Um, so I just say, you know, it doesn't matter if, if your family thinks you're posting too much, it doesn't matter. It's not their business and it's not your yep. business what they think. What they feel, right? They yep. can just skip your page. D I think Dion is next. Thank you, Trendelin. I like that. Dion. Actually, my partner, as always, said what I was thinking, because I mean, it, it, I don't care. And I put myself in that position because I did used to care like when I first started actually posting my business and especially when yeah. I actually started selling things and that type of stuff you know I was nervous of course and all that um I still don't get a lot of likes on those but yeah if I post something oh, about you know you. my children or you know whatever else I def I get more you know get more likes but I don't care that nobody I'm gonna keep doing it because like um Adrian said like Tran said they're going to see it and that's all that needs to happen that's what that is for right for them to at least see it get it put it in them and however they you know, put it out there, whether it's them talking about you, talking you up, talking you down, whatever, they still actually help and market you for real if you think about it. So I can't care and I don't, I put myself in a position to not care about what other people think. I'm still going to post my business on my personal page and I'm so, I'm going to start doing it even more throughout the day. So oh. they'll be all right. They'll be all right. <laughs> Thank sure. you, Sestras. Uh, Adrian, you have something to say for a wrap up? <laughs> I was just going by what she said. You you can't care about what other people say because if someone's always going to talk about you. They're always going to talk negative. But if I'm that important in your life, keep talking. So like you said, you talk to somebody else, somebody, they might trigger and they're going to come right to you. So talk on. Yeah. Okay. You guys got me stopped. You know, I'm just... I was about to say preach again. I can't... Sometimes you just can't help that that's what... But, you know... You guys, you get it. So the so for tonight, who cares what anyone thinks? Post about your business. That's what our sessions have to say. I say I had a tip here to keep your your business and your personal life as private, you know, as possible. Because really, to piggyback off of what Adrian said, people just nosy because they jump in when they get ready to jump in. And that's how you know they're watching. And a good sign for those of you watching that you know, watching this to, to uh, this recording, how you know people are watching you is when you look at your stories. And you can see in the stories that tells you how many views you have. Actually, it's not just the stories, like the demographics, we all have them. If you go to your admin section of your page, you will see the impressions right? Impressions or how many people, you know, passed over that. Um, the story will tell you 100 people viewed it, eight actually responded. But you know what? Sometimes um, I don't hold that against people because sometimes I see stories and it, it goes so fast, you don't get an opportunity to react or respond or to comment. But a lot of times it could be major viewing of something and not a reaction on a post. It happens all the time. So some of these people are just watching and being nosy because they want to know what's going on in your life. And then they only respond in a negative way, some of them. Not everyone, but some of them. Or they're tracking you and you'll get that call later. Girl, yeah, I heard what's going on. Yeah, I saw you doing your thing. And then you're thinking, you saw I'm doing my thing. What do you mean by that? How would you know? Like, yeah, because you've been watching me all this time. 
right? But you don't respond, you don't react, you don't anything to any, which helps your business owners. So those that are not business owners watching this, understand that we're all here trying to uh, make a life and uh, build a future, build generational wealth for our families. So when you see a business owner um, posting something about their business, just like it, love it, something, um, in, engage with them a little bit. It's not going to hurt you, but it's like buying something from their business, so to speak. Right. So just do it. It, you know, like, come on, it's not going to hurt you, but it's going to help them. So on that note, we're going to go. So don't care about nos nosy people. Um, don't talk about unnecessary stuff. We don't want everyone all up in our business. They don't need to be up in the bathroom with us. They don't need to be up in the bedroom with us. Um, actually, they don't need to be everywhere with you. You know, me, I'm kind of addicted. I'm going to end on this note. I'm kind of addicted to those food videos. Like when these people be eating and they be smacking us. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I've been dieting lately, but I just watch them when they <laughs> dress up their sandwich and they eat it or that chicken. When I want to hear the crunch and the sandwich, I want to see the bite. And it's this guy on one of the things he goes, her, her. He lets you see it and it's like he's giving you a piece of his sandwich. He'd be like, here. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> you know how you laughing at me? <laughs> I, mean, I love watching food videos. I love watching food videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to come. We come into you. We come into your restaurant to eat and we're going to tape our experience. So be ready for that. That's going to be when we have our food, integrate your plate. Is going to travel over there to you in uh, Trendland, and we're going to tape it. I'm going to do my food. I'm going to be like, huh, try some of Dion's. I don't know what you're making, but that stuff <laughs> looks delicious. I'm going to be showing them. Yeah, come over here and get some of this. Because mm -hmm. it's got <laughs> onion in it. Onion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, all my sisters, and uh, I want to thank you guys for showing up. I want to uh, thank uh, Sister Our Circle, the founders for Sister Our Circle for joining us tonight. They're part of the Sisterhood Alliance. So everyone stay tuned because there are going to be a lot of exciting announcements coming. So follow us all on social media and stay tuned for what's going to happen with our collaboration, our partnership with UBC TV. And stay tuned for that sister channel. So I'm going to say good night and thank you all for uh, joining us. Thank you for having us. All right. All right. Good night. Bye -bye. Thank you. Good night. good night, ladies. Good night, everybody.